I want to provide people with the avenue that didn't think they had an avenue by demonstration, by actually showing them, not just talking about it, but hey, showing them, hey, you can do this and you can do it by this method. And as difficult as you thought it was, it's not that difficult. It's going to take some work, but as hard as you thought it was, it's not. Mm -hmm. That's going to, I, I feel it, it, it'll change everything, right? So that, that that's my goal. My goal is to preach it to the masses, get it out to the masses, but do it through demonstration. Absolutely. What's up, y'all? It's Max Maxwell, and welcome back to the Max Maxwell Show. This is another episode where I bring in some of the best and brightest young and upcoming investors and just interesting people all together from across the country right here to little old North Carolina. So today, I have no other than Mike Anderson hailing from where? Dallas? Dallas, Texas. Dallas, man. Texas. They say things are bigger in Texas, like your real estate deals. One thing I do notice, y'all don't have no zoning. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a dope thing. Anyways, man, welcome to North Carolina, man. Thank you for having me, man. How how is it? How is it? How's it going? How's it been? It's it's been well. It's, it's been a grind. That's good. But uh, it's, it's been going well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so right now you got your real estate investor in Dallas. Yes, sir. You are consistently going after and getting deals right now. Yes, sir. Right. What is what? Something I liked about your strategy that was different than most. Tell us what you do to actually you know, procure your, your leads or your appointments and stuff like that. Something else was unique about is about your sales process. Right. So, so what we do is we target a specific market, which is the pre foreclosure market. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we actually go to these homeowners home. You're knocking on doors. We knocking on doors. Yeah. We getting dirty with it. Okay. So we got focused leads. Uh, we pull these leads from all across Dallas County and the surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we base them off the equity that that's in the home. And then we go to these homes, speak with these homeowners, but we don't offer to purchase their home. Got it. We use a different approach. We use an approach of service. Uh, so what we've done, me and my team, we've we've gained the expertise on the foreclosure process in Texas. That's it. You become an expert. That's it. That's it. And we share that expertise with the homeowner, and then we provide them options and solutions that a lot of them don't know they have. Correct. And out of those options and, and those solutions, we nav we help them navigate which one best fits their situation. Got it. So before we start talking about your, com your your company and your strategies, let's go back. Let's take the story back a little bit, okay. right? You, you're you originally from Texas? No, I'm originally from Kansas. Kansas. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they had brothers in Kansas. Yeah, they do, man, quite a bit. What part of Kansas? Topeka. Topeka, Kansas. Now, I've been there for a rodeo before, but that's about it. Okay. Um, And then you moved to Dallas. How long? How long? I moved to Dallas in uh, 2012. So it's been, you've been there about 10 plus years now. 10 years, yep. So... You're in Dallas now, and you I mean you got into real estate early. When was when did you get into yeah, real so estate? Yeah, so actually when I when I originally got to Dallas, I, I worked for uh, um for General Motors. GM. GM, OGM, yeah, the Arlington plant. Uh, I was a, a production supervisor. Mm. So I supervised production for eight years. Well, you know, eight years, GM, you making some good money. I was. I was. Yeah. I, I was making really good money. Outside looking in, you'd be like, why didn't you stay put? Yeah. Uh, which is a good question, right? So what was what was unsettling about making six figures and being a supervisor? It wasn't for me. I, I wanted ownership. I wanted to, and when I say ownership, I wanted to own my life. I wanted to control my life. Freedom. Freedom, absolutely. Working, uh, what are you working like? You working crazy hours. Oh man, six days, six days a week, 10 hours a day. You know, uh, the money that I was making, I didn't have time to enjoy it. That might have been a good thing. Yeah, it might have been a good thing. It may have worked in my favor in the long run. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's funny because a lot of people in it that are sitting in those same exact shoes right now, they have a decent job. They're somewhat content. Mm -hmm. But the idea is you're not happy, even though it's six figures. And people from the outside looking in is like, what are you doing? You're living an American dream. There's only 19 percent of households that, you know, person makes six, six, you know, six figures or more. Mm -hmm. So you felt unsettled. You wanted freedom. Some would say that's selfish. But how do you come out and make that decision? What is that turning point for you as an employee to be like, I want out? I, I use the term, I, I say I put the glasses on and couldn't take them off. Mm. I seen more for myself uh, that the four walls of General Motors, they, they couldn't provide me. So the thoughts in my head, the visions that I had were bigger, were way bigger than what General Motors could provide. Now, it's not talking down on them, but it's just stating that, you know, yes, it was a platform, but where I was going was so much greater and so much more. You were like a shark in a fish tank. Oh, man. Yeah. 
And so you had to grow. What what decisions are going on in your head as you're contemplating? Because this is not a split decision. You ain't getting in a fight with somebody. You like you you had to think this through, which I think is crazy. You got to think this decision through before you make that phone call or make that email to say I'm resigning. Mm-hmm. What is that? What's, what's the thought process? Because the reason why I'm asking is because there's a lot of people, like, like I said, that are sitting in the same position right now. And, you know, luckily for you, didn't you didn't have kids. So that was a little bit easier for you to make that decision. It was you. You had to make that decision for yourself. Mm-hmm. What 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 are you asking yourself in your head? What questions are you answering? The first, well, the, I think the first question may, maybe everybody in that position or has been in my position asks is, "Can I sustain? Mm-hmm. If I leave, what's going to happen?" So what I had what I had to do is I had to believe in self. Do I really believe in myself? Mm-hmm. And if I really do believe in myself, and I say I have a plan and I believe I can execute this plan, what's stopping me from doing it? Got it. So it, it, it was the, the resistance that you get from everybody else around you that may not truly understand why you're making the move that you make. But then you got to dig in in yourself mm-hmm. and see what is it? Why are, you, why are you making this move? Right. And somebody can say it's selfish. But then again, what I'm doing, I, I feel like I'm helping way more people. I have, I have the time and the freedom to be able to help way more people. And I just felt like it was my purpose. I had to go after it. I say all the time, I say you got to be selfish before you can be selfless. And that's the decision you had to make. You had to make kind of a selfish decision to be selfless down the road where you can employ people, where you can help the community, where you can do things that most people can't afford to do because they decide to choose the door of security versus freedom. Mm -hmm. Right? And so now you're at the position where you could make those decisions. I mean, we grow every day. We're right. growing every day. So you're at this crossroad. How did you find real estate? How did you put that real estate crossroad in the way? Like you're in a path to GM. I'm pretty sure you could grow up the ladder at this point. Yeah, I could have. Uh, but I, I had to grow up the ladder mentally first to see what was that, that going to bring me. When did you, when'd you discover real estate? I discovered real estate back in 2018. And you just was like, I want to be an investor? No, nah, I was like, well, I always wanted to do real estate. Okay. I'm like, I'm going to do other things so I can build some capital so I can get into real estate. Because that's the dream they sell, right? Right, right. That's the dream they sell. And you always feel like, you know, I need a lot of money before I get into it. But it got to the point because I also uh, partnered in a e-commerce business. Okay. Uh, and we did fairly well. Pandemic hits. We have foreign suppliers. You know, we lose everything. Can't, can't move anything. So you got to switch up the strategy. Okay, what are you going to do? So... Actually, I was watching you. I pulled you up when it came to the whole wholesaling. I'm like, okay, you know, if this brother can do it. I can too. I can do it. <laughs> and I just took what you said and I implemented it. And I, I closed a couple of deals and then I ran across another mentor and a partner that uh, I got a hold of. And it's a great program. It was a great, a, a great setup. Uh, we believed in it and we ran with it. And Was this the same, was, 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 uh, was this the same, like the e-com did this give you some breathing room, like to save some money up? Did these couple deals give you some confidence or were you at the job at this time or you left the job? So I was still at the job. Okay, so you built some confidence yeah. doing what you were doing. So the deals, it really, so the wholesale deals didn't net me that much. But what it did net me is the confidence. Proof of concept. That I can do this. Okay, now, now, now I see how we're navigating mm-hmm. this. Now I see what I need to do to scale it, mm-hmm. to make it grow. And that's what I did. I always wanted to get into flipping. So we got we did the wholesaling and then we were able to take the capital and then what we had made from the e-commerce and what I had saved from my job and we and we put it into the put it into the business. Was that scary getting into your very, first flip? Your f- first flip is scary. Mm-hmm. Did it, it was, work out? Did you make profit at all? Yeah, we made profit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Made profit on my first flip. The scariest part was leaving the job though. Yeah. That's that's still the scariest part because you don't have that security of that that guaranteed paycheck. That first and the 15th rolled around, nothing hit your uh, account. Man, nothing hitting. <laughs> nothing hitting. <laughs> Except for the bills still hitting the mailbox. Right. Don't get sick. You don't got no insurance no more. Yeah. You know, so all and, the, and sick days don't matter. They don't, don't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So it was um it was it, it was just I guess embracing the grind. Mm-hmm. You know, embracing the grind for me. But yeah, the, the first flip did profit, uh, and we were able to scale a little bit, um, a lot of it. And this second year is just, well, this third year has, has been great. I say that entrepreneurship is not for everybody, mm-hmm. but you never know until you try it. Right. 
So I don't ever discourage somebody to take put their hand in there and try it. Because once you get the taste or once you put them glasses on, ooh, it's hard to take them off. Yeah. It's hard to take them off. So now let's go back to real estate. Your team, your acquisitions people, how you find them, how are you training them? So what we did is we we, we created the model that we that we did. It's called the Let's Get Paid model. Uh, where, like I said, we were direct marketing to these homeowners. So what we did is we advertised free real estate training mm -hmm. to scale our business. So we literally put bandit signs out that were advertising free real estate uh, investing training. And the people that will call in, we taught them our ways. We taught them how we market. For free? For free. For free. The commitment. So how we did it was they come in, they learn our ways, they commit to our, to our ways. That way we know that they're serious. Mm -hmm. And they activate different levels of training to gain the expertise to be a full-time real estate investor. And in doing that, we were able to touch way more deals. We were able to reach out way more people. We got the leverage that we needed. Got it. So, so the way I'm seeing this in my head is you're going out, you're saying, hey, look, I'll train you how to be a real estate investor, right? I'll train you how to do some wholesale deals. I'll mm -hmm. train you how to get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. You're training them. They go out and they execute on these principles and you're paying them once they execute certain steps. Mm -hmm. And this in return grows your acquisition pool mm -hmm. so that you can buy the deals, wholesale deals, whatever you want to do with them. Yep. And so you're training, but also incentivizing people along the way. So it's a win-win situation. You know, this person's probably not going to be with you forever, right? but you know that they play a part in the role of, and so and vice versa, you right. play a part in their role. Right. It's like a, it's a high turnover, but you go through that to, to find the ones that you need. But yeah, so it's, it's a, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Mm. I teach you real estate, you help me scale my business. And in turn, we'll put some money in your pocket as well. So now it incentivizes you to do it the way that we taught you. Got it. So they go out and they get these, they speak with the homeowners after gaining the expertise you know, to get an appointment so I can come in and close. So they go to the door. Oh yeah. And that's different than most people doing now. These door knocking was back in the early 2000s. People were knocking the doors then and after the crash, they were knocking doors. You don't hear too many people knocking doors. So you're training these folks to build up the courage to go knock on a door based upon a list you provide them. Absolutely. So it's a targeted list. Mm -hmm. So not cold calling, but cold walking. Right. Woo! Mm -hmm. Not warm walking, you warm walking. Yeah, you warm yeah, knocking, because right. you're giving the list. Yeah, I'm giving them the list. So I pro we're providing the leads to them. And they're focused leads, so we, we know what type of equity are in these homes and, and, and so you pre screen forth. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we also know more about the homeowner's finances and situation than the homeowner does. Mm. So we're already, you know, we're, we're going to the doorstep with the level of expertise that we know. This is interesting. We I, can assist the homeowner. This is interesting. So you're, you're building your acquisitions team in a very organic way. Um, you are you are teaching them to door knock, which is probably you're weeding out a bunch of people who doesn't have the skills or the will. Mm -hmm. And if they pass that test, then you're probably going to be able to use them in some other ways. Absolutely. Um, so we've been spending the day together. We've been talking about, you know, I've been going over your business practices and I love what I'm seeing. I think there's a few things you can add in there that's gonna turn you up very quickly. Sometimes it just takes us fellowshipping and talking and being like, yo, I do this and this has been working well for me. And I'm, I'm taking some things from you and I'm like, oh, this is a good way of doing certain things. Um, this is an interesting model. Has it been successful though? Very, mm. very. Speak on it. So uh, we've done over 10 million in transactions. We've stepped over 60,000 homeowners doors. So you, you've, you've, you've knocked 60,000 doors. 60,000 plus and continuing. <laughs> you gotta start get, finding more doors. Absolutely, and we've paid out over $300,000 to the students that actually join our program mm. for free. So they join for free, get paid while they learn. They get paid while they learn. Yes, and sir. so what is your plans now after this? You obviously you're gonna grow, but. Absolutely, so we wanna scale. We want to get to the point to where we can build this to where I can step away uh, and not step away from real estate, but step away to be able to step into other aspects of real estate to grow the business. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually put it into a turnkey type business to where we can we can sell the model. Mm. Absolutely. So you got the end game in mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it. Um, what what type of hiccups and difficulties have you seen? in not only your market, but the way you go out there and acquire, what's been the most difficult thing you think so far? Uh, the most difficult thing, is not, not, not just the competition, because that just comes with the game. Yeah. Um, 
it's just the communication with the homeowners. Yeah. Right. We're, we're, we are marketing a homeowner that does not want to sell their home. And they've been running away from probably bills for a Absolutely. while. Absolutely. They don't want to face the financial problems that they have. So it's learning the tricks and the trades of how to af- not just communicate, but to effectively mm. communicate with the homeowners to where they understand our language. Right. Because we have a certain level of understanding, but we go to the door and we can't expect them to have that same level of understanding. Yeah. So how do we get them to sit down and listen to what it is that we have to say so we can gain that understanding so we can be able to help them? How much is it costing you to learn these foreclosure programs? Um, not much. Free. Just free. information, it's right? It's information. The internet <laughs> is free. Yeah. So... This is interesting. Tell me, tell me, I mean, tell me about probably your most heroic deal, you know, because sometimes foreclosures get down to a timely, Mm -hmm. timely thing. It's like the 11th hour. Okay. Yeah. So I just had one maybe about a month ago. Situation is a young lady. um, She's living in a house. Her parents passed Mm -hmm. um, and she did not have authorization on the loan to be able to continue to pay it. Oh, wow. So it got to a point to where, okay, they start to foreclose on the home. And yes, she had a consistent job to where she could have kept up with the payments she just didn't do the things that she needed to do to get the the will in her name and you know the authors all that probate stuff. Right, right. So she didn't go through that, and she was behind a lump sum of money. Okay, now she can't pay it back. Uh, so she called us. I want to say the weekend before Labor Day, that Friday before Labor Day. Have you already been in contact with her? Oh yeah, we've already bought the house. No, I'm saying before. Wait, have you before she called you? Did you, were you already in contact with yeah, her? Yeah, we did. So a person from my team actually reached out to her. Got it. So she they said, knocked on her door or something mm-hmm. or something like she that. She said, hey, I'm working with somebody. We said, hey, that's fine. You know, we don't want to step on any toes. If whatever, it, if something happens and, and they didn't fulfill, you know, your needs, they didn't call. solve the problem, give me a call. So she called us literally the Friday before auction. Auction's on Tuesday. Mm. She calls Friday. Labor Day is on Monday. Bank's closed. <sighs> Everything's closed. How do you stop that? So we had to figure out a way. We had to get creative. So what we did is we were able to have her file bankruptcy to pause the foreclosure. That way we could execute the sale. And now we're still working with her so we can help expunge that bankruptcy and help rebuild her credit. Mm. Absolutely. That's interesting, man. Um, There's a lot of tricks and rules and things you just got to read to figure out the answer. Mm -hmm. And I think what you have your example of is diving deep into a niche and understanding it. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me when I first started how I focused on taxes and probates, tax foreclosures and and people who passed away with homes as an asset. Right. And it wasn't like surface level understanding, like it was nerd level three understanding. Oh yeah, you gotta dig. Right, you mm-hmm. gotta go into state statute mm-hmm. and you gotta read the procedures that the state has put in line for each county to follow. Right. They, can't, they can't go around these rules. Nope. They may have their own variations of things outside of this, but the rules are the rules. Right. And so what we talked about before when we were in my office, I was like, listen, the way I look at my business and the specialty of going after a very deep list is I am a doctor and if I want to be the best doctor, let's just say I was a petite, like what do you call those people to do it feet? A foot doctor. Let's just say the lack of better terms right now, right? We got a foot doctor and I specialize in cancers of the foot. I don't know, making things up as I go. But the idea is if I want to be the best doctor, rated on Google, best doctor in town, best doctor in, in the city, I have to be able to stop cancer from taking over people's body through the foot, right? Right. So how do I do that? My best bet to do that is the earliest detection as possible. Mm -hmm. So I come up with a method to find the earliest signs of cancer in the foot. Mm -hmm. Now just replace cancer of the foot with foreclosures. Absolutely. And I come up with the best method to find the foreclosures before they become public record Mm -hmm. because if I can find it early that means I have more contact with it more tests I can do Mm -hmm. right that in turn turns me into a specialist because the earlier I discover it the better chances I have of fixing the problem with the house or fixing the problem with the cancer of the foot absolutely and if I can find it early and stop it before it starts that people are gonna think that yo it's the best that's the best foot doctor in the city Mm -hmm. in the state 
He might be the best in the country. Right. And it's the same thing. So I say all that to say, in the state statute, it gives you steps. And you figured out by reading, I don't know if I want to reveal it because other people want you to go read the state statute. Right, right. Yeah, go read that. <laughs> yeah, go read the state. But you, you read the state statute mm -hmm. and you figured out the first moment that this record or first indication of this record hits public record. Yep. And that's where you jump in. That's where we jump in. And that in. steps way before it hits the auction. Mm -hmm. We Sometimes we we are the ones notifying that the homeowner that they're in foreclosure. They don't even know yet. They don't even know yet. So that's how early it is. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring information to where we can prove and show that, hey. We know. We know. We know you know it's coming, but we know it's already here. Right. But but we're here to help. You have options. Absolutely. You have options. You, you would be the best doctor in the state doing that stuff. Yeah. And so that's why I try to tell other people when they're out there doing real estate and they're out there looking at real estate, I'm like, yo, all you got to do is really just focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. Focus on one lead source. Focus on one problem. Get real good at solving that problem. Because if you, even if you look at the doctor world, who makes more money, a general practitioner or a specialist? Specialist. All day long. So if I ask you what your, your top lead source is and you name off seven, you're a generalist. Mm -hmm. I'm a specialist. Mm -hmm. I hyper-focus down on, because there's enough foreclosures in, in, in Dallas County mm -hmm. for to keep you and your entire team busy for here to the kingdom come. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure so you just got to get better at finding them and dealing with more people and growing your staff that's it that's it we we want to reach every homeowner that's facing foreclosure yeah that's what we want to do but in order to do that we have to scale yeah but that's the goal because we know we have the expertise to be able to provide them with the options and solutions that we know they don't know about to mitigate their foreclosure so if you need new investors or upcoming investors to come work with you to scale how do they get a hold of you you get a hold of me by visiting letsgetpaid.com it's already there it's already there just register uh, we have a free info webinar that we host you can come learn all about us and if it fits what you're trying to do in your real estate and investing career it. come join us that's simple that's simple so your end game give me your end game for this entire thing what, what did you what do you want to do what, what's the end look like for you the end looks like something that I'm not going to be here to see. Mm. Uh, I want to gain access and be able to give access. Um, I know that that's going to be some work, right? Um, I want to provide people with the avenue that didn't think they had an avenue mm -hmm. by demonstration. Actually showing them. By actually showing them. Not just talking about it, but hey, showing them, hey, you can do this. And you can do it by this method. And as difficult as you thought it was, it's not that difficult. It's going to take some work. But as hard as you thought it was, it's not. Mm -hmm. That's gonna. I, I feel it'll, it. It'll change everything, right? So that that that's my goal. My goal is to preach it to the masses, get it out to the masses, but do it through demonstration. Absolutely. That's dope, man. Um, I usually ask a question to everybody that comes to this show. If you had the entire world's attention, the entire world, everybody—men, women, children, babies—doesn't matter and you had 60 seconds to talk to the entire world, mm -hmm. what would you say? And I'd before you say that, mm -hmm. I want you to look in that camera as mm -hmm. if you're talking to the whole world. I'd ask a question. What is the benefit of you waiting? I know a lot of you have goals, you have dreams, you have ambitions, you have ideas that you have not yet stepped foot to attack or take action on. What is your benefit for waiting. By you waiting, you are being extremely selfish because there are people that are waiting for the gift that you have to show to the world. So that would be a question. It wouldn't necessarily be a statement. I would ask that question. What's your benefit? How does it benefit you waiting? That's it. That's it. Yo, here's, here's the thing. I don't pre, I don't tell people that they're about to be asked that question. And these podcasts haven't been released yet, so you don't even know that this question, even if you're a viewer, you don't even know that this question is coming. So he's passionate about that. That's something that he, in his head he's already had mm -hmm. ready to go. Absolutely. Um, what, I, what I'm challenging you to do is it's very rare that I run across people who are genuine in this business. And what I'm asking you to do is uh, become more active on social media. Absolutely. People need to see it before they can be it. And you're an example of something they need to see that they can figure out to be. And the cool thing is, it's like, you're not sitting here and be like, yo, I'm the best. I'm at the top. You're like, yo, I figured something out and I'm growing. Right. And I got a lot of, lot of, a lot of work to do. A whole lot. <laughs> but people can get ambition from seeing you grow that process. Mm -hmm. So I, I just challenge you to 
open that social media, use it in a way that you know is effective, not flashy, not cashy, mm -hmm. just showing people that, yo, and, 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 and not this rags to riches story, but like, yo, I had a six figure job. Mm -hmm. I left it cause I was unfulfilled and you could do the same too. Absolutely. Um, so with that being said, where can they find you on social? You can find me at uh, on Instagram at yourfave underscore REI uh, and the same on Twitter, yourfave REI. And we'll put that link in the bottom. So you got letsgetpaid.com let's if you want to join the team. And then uh, shoot out your handles one more time. Yourfave underscore REI. That's the handle on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Well, dope, man. Mike, I, I appreciate you coming out here to do this with me, man. I appreciate you it's having been dope. me, man. It's been dope. Well, there you guys have it. This is the Max Maxwell Show. I am Max Maxwell. And if you are listening in podcast land, do me a favor. It's going to cost you absolutely nothing. Just give me a five-star rating and leave a comment. What do you think about Mike? And if you're listening or watching on YouTube, you know what it is. Hit the subscribe button if you're not. If you like the video, press like if you do. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.